Now, all programs using Windows have a window handle denoted by the structure HWND. This structure is used to alter the window settings and also used by Direct3D to render through. Our function to finally create the window returns this handle, so we need to have a structure ready for use. We need to declare our HWND window handle, I'm going to call it. Now into that, what we want to do is pass through our create window ex function, which creates the final window. This function has a lot of parameters, but once we fill these out, our window will be created. The first parameter is generally unused, and it's used for styles. Therefore, we're going to put null in there. Second is our class name that we've just declared as window class name. Here we've got our window title. At the top here you can see it says Direct3D Tutorial, Microsoft Visual Studio. That's our window title. At the moment we're going to just call it my win32 window. This parameter is another style flag but we need to fill this one out. In this case we're going to use WS overlapped window. What this does is it's a predefined bundle of flags that generates a standard window for us so we don't have to deal with any of the borders or X buttons or stuff like that. These next two parameters are our X and Y coordinates that we want the window to start in. In this case I'm going to specify 00. zero. I'm just going to put our parameters down here so it's easier to read. These next two parameters are our width and height for the window and I'm going to specify that as 800 and 600 and 800 by 600 window. In this next parameter you're able to use a handle to another window to act as a parent for this window. However we don't have any other windows so we're going to use null for this. In this next parameter we can specify any menus we, have, we may have created but we haven't so we'll use null again. For this parameter all we want to do is specify our h instance that we got from winmain. Therefore type in h instance and finally we have a parameter where we can specify anything else we want to send to the window. However we don't have anything and again just put a null. Lastly we need to show and update the window. Therefore we need to type in show window specify our handle to the window which we've called window handle and also the n show cmd that we got from the win main so n show cmd that will specify whether the window is to be started minimized maximized whatever also we've got the update window function which we pass in our window handle to and there we are, that's our window created. We now need to create the message loop. This is essentially our main loop. It handles incoming messages from Windows itself, such as keyboard input, redrawing messages, and the quit message to tell us to terminate our program. To receive any messages, we need to make a structure to hold them in. For this, we use the MSG structure, which I'm gonna call message, MSG. After declaring this, we need to enter into the loop. So we need to create a while loop using the getMessage function. We need to specify our message, the handle to the window to get messages from, which we set to null to specify all windows in our instance. And the last two values are the range of messages we want to receive. However, setting both to zero states that we want to receive all messages. We use the getMessage function itself as the parameter for the while loop, since if the function returns a zero, then the program has been told to close, so logically this works out. Inside the loop, we need to use the function translate message using a reference to our message, and then dispatch message, again using a reference to our message. The translate message function here literally translates the message we received from a load of rubbish into something we can work with. The dispatch message function sends this newly translated message to the window proc function we've yet to declare. 
our function will then process the data within these messages our window prop function being this the one that we specified up here now for the final part of the puzzle at the top here we want to set out the function prototype for our window prop function this is this returns an out result and we need to specify that it's a callback function called window prop the parameters we want to use are a window handle a hwnd an unsigned integer specified by uint for the message a w param which is one half of a message and an l param which is another half of the message these parameters will hold data from the messages being sent from the dispatch message function down here the first being the windows handle the second parameter is the ID of the message we received which we can use predefined macros to identify the w param parameter holds the actual message data which is only really usable if you know the ID of the message the l param is essentially the second half of the data sent with the w param for example a mouse move message might store the x data in the w param and the y data in the l param we now need to define the function so back down here outside of the main function we need to add a switch statement which will handle each individual message as it comes in so add a switch with message in this is an easy way of catching the messages we care about without diving into the realms of conditional statements add a default case to handle any messages we don't want to process so add a default type in return def window clock which is default windows procedure and add our parameters as they come which are exactly the same as the parameters for our windows prop function and add a break this is self-explanatory you just pass in the same parameters as the window prop function and it essentially just tells windows to do its default thing with the data some tutorials will add this line after the switch statement however I personally feel that it's horrible practice to have a switch statement without a default case so I prefer to put it in there it won't make the slightest bit of difference but still it's the way I do it one final thing before we compile we need to tell our program to close when we receive a message to close in this case when our user clicks the X button on the window we receive a message from windows to close but if we don't do anything about it our user won't be able to close their application to do this, add an extra case using case wm underscore destroy. That's a little Windows message prefix there. Add a little break in there, and what we want to use is our post quit message function, and then just return zero. The post quit message function will tell our program to stop running on the next message received. Remember our while loop was going to end when it received a zero? We, while calling this function will make the next get message call return a zero. And that's it for Windows programming in this series. Now on to the Direct3D. And there's our window.